Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we're going to take the mystery out of the Beeman Bullpup. This is the uh, PCP underlever. That's the actual model 1359. This one is in 25 caliber. This is brand new. It's in 25 caliber. Probably seen them in the past. Had them in 177 and 22. But we get to test the 25 caliber today. Before we get started on this, do me a favor if you hadn't already. Hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel, and I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you have the opportunity, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I got various t-shirts, I've got hats, I got my generation two bipods, and then I've got some inventory that I like to relinquish, and I've told you guys this before. I try to sell stuff on the website, then take that money and reinvest it in new products so I can bring you some other things here. So anyway, let's talk about the uh, 25 caliber Beeman underlever here, our PCP. This comes in three calibers, 0 0.177, 0 0.22, and now in 25, new for this year. So the rifle itself, pre-charged pneumatic before, it's got a foster fitting right on the front here that you fill it. It's a fill point to 3,000 PSI, so just a little over 200 bar. The rifle itself, it weighs about 7 pounds. It's not overly heavy. Pretty compact. It's about 30 inches overall in length. Uh, the barrel itself is 18 inches, and that's a beautiful thing about a bullpup design. It just moves the entire assembly backwards. So you're still getting a nice long barrel, it's just making the overall rifle compact. So it actually comes with two nine shot magazines, as you can see here, and it comes with two single shot trays, it comes with some various Allen wrenches, and a degasser. So it comes pretty cool. And in 25 caliber, they're nine shot magazines. So each round, each magazine holds nine rounds. Uh, the very unique design on this is the under lever cocking. So each time you cock this and it cocks really easy, you just pull this back forward. That's it. That's all there is to cocking it. It advances the magazine. This can be decocked. You just hold on to that, take safety off, pull the trigger, then gently bring this forward and that's it. And you can decock it. So it's got a nice hardwood ambidextrous stock, which is great, especially for us left-handers. This design here has three Picatinny rails. So if you want to put some type of accessory on the side, you can do that. Um, it does come with this 4x32 scope. We'll talk more about this at the end. You're probably not going to see this again because I'm not going to use it during the testing process. It's not fair to the rest of the gun. So that gave you kind of a little hint about where I'm going as far as this uh, scope goes. So they're advertising that this will shoot about 780 feet per second, but like anything else, we're going to test it. Now keep in mind, this is non-regulated. This is a non-regulated gun. Uh, it does have a two-stage two adjustable trigger. I'll tell you a little bit later how you adjust that. But anyway, let's go, let's go out and play with this. Let's go test it, and uh, then we're going to come back and talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. All right, let's test the beam and over the crony, see what type of uh, velocity we get. So. 25 caliber, we do have a few choices as far as uh, pellets go, but we're going to go with the H&N uh, field target trophies. These are a little bit over a 20 grain uh, pellet. They're a little over 20 grains. So let's just shoot five shots. We'll average it out. All right. Okay, shot number one. 851. Shot number two, 841. Shot number three, that one didn't read, that was an error. Oh, shot number four, 844. Shot number five, 831. There you go, that's enough for an average anyway. But that's with the 20 game pellet. Pretty, actually pretty respectable, if I do say so myself. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test our beam and bullpup out for some accuracy. It's always a good measure on these. Uh, just so you guys know, I tried a few pellets in these. The uh, 
JSB Exact Kings, the the um, 25.39 grain, they kind of had the edge. So we're going to shoot these. We're going to do five shots. We'll see how well it groups. We're going to go ahead and use our four inch splatter burst. These guys, you've seen them before. I'll leave you a link down below. They really identify our impact points, especially you guys with the older eyes. It's much easier to see. So we're at our PCP distance. What I try to do, I get, try to get as far back as I can on a level property because I want to give I want to give the gun the benefit of the doubt the best we can. So we're a little over 40 yards, just a little bit over 40 yards. So go ahead, take a quick look. And that's what we're going to be uh, shooting at there. Okay, like I said, we're going to do five shots. We're just going to see how well it groups. And uh, I've got my rear bag here, so I've got this lined up. So I'm going to try to be as accurate as possible from 40 yards. So let's see how well we do. All right, shot number one. All right, that's a heck of a shot. Now the only problem with the under lever here is when you're bag resting it, you got to lift it up off your position where the other ones you don't. But in the field for follow-up shots, stuff like that, that's fantastic. All right, shot number two. Amazing. And shot number three. Shot number four. Yeah, I really like those pellets. And shot number five. Wow. <clears throat> I have to say, for 40 yards, that's a heck of a group. It really is. It really is. Anyway, pretty cool gun. Let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test our trigger on our uh, beam and bull pup here and uh, see how it performs. We've got a trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. And let's see here. Two pounds, 11.5 ounces. Two pounds, 11.5 ounces. So that's your trigger. Not a horrible trigger. Not too shabby. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, my favorite portion, once again, is the plinking um, portion of the review video. So we're gonna see how we do out here at 40 yards. We're gonna go ahead and shoot the H&N uh, filled target trophies. These are the uh, 20.06 grain pellets. Before I get into that though, I wanna show you guys uh, a couple of products that came by me, or actually it's one product, just a couple of colors. But, um, I don't know if you guys haul your scuba tanks around, or especially if you have a carbon fiber tank, you're really going to haul that around. But I got these really cool tank bags. So check these out. These, uh, these are actually put out by the Dynamic uh, Air Rifles, DAR, and they make a tan one, and they make obviously a black one. And what's really cool about them is, you see this, it's got a handle on it. So it's really easy to move these things around if you, if you need to move them around. And then you also, you can, you've got bags in here where you can put your accessories, your different tips or what have you. But they're actually really cool, really heavy duty. There's actually a reinforced bottom in there. But check those out. Anyway, I'll leave you guys a link. But there's the black and tan. They kind of make things really convenient for moving these tanks around. I really noticed that. Like I said, I just have a conventional tank in there, but these are probably more designed for the little shorter carbon fiber, but it actually works quite well with this. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, let's get back to our plinking real quick. So we're our usual 40 plus yards uh, plinking distance. Go ahead and check that out. And you can see we've got quite a few little objects up there. All right, let's knock some targets down. Okay. Let's, uh, let's start with the egg on the far left side. Ah, I got a twofer. All right. How about, uh, get that shotgun shell. Okay. God, this thing is accurate. It really is. Okay. Far left egg.
and the next egg. And how about let's punch a hole in that can. Hell, I want to shoot that can again since we have another round. Alright. Yeah, nothing to that, that's for sure, punching holes in that. The accuracy of this is pretty doggone amazing, it really is, especially at the price point of this rifle. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. All right, let's uh, move on to the next segment, and uh, we'll wrap this up. All right, let's wrap this up with our conclusion. Well, how did our uh, Beeman 1359 do? Really good, in my opinion. Really good. And like I said, the 25 caliber, it's brand new. So it's great that we got to test its performance. But like anything else, let's talk about the negatives. And I do have a few negatives with this. Okay, first off, I'm going to talk about the trigger. The trigger is decent, okay, but it's not great. It's pretty mushy in the center, and it's got a pretty long length of pull. And there's very lim limited adjustments. In fact, in order to adjust this trigger, you have to take the two stock bolts loose that are here on the bottom. You just pull those off, and you pull the assembly off. And there's one little Allen bolt that you can adjust the trigger with. And what you want to do is, Unfortunately, if you crank that bolt in too far, it'll engage the sear, so this won't cock. So you got to be very careful about how you adjust it. And actually, the stock setting is pretty much there. You might get one or two more turns out of it, but just be careful because it will engage your sear. So your trigger is what you get. It's a little bit on the mushy side. The other thing I want to talk about is this, this scope, this little 4x32. My opinion, toss it, get rid of it. Not even, it's not even worth your time. As you saw, we upgraded the scope through our testing. That's just so we had nice, clear optics. This, I mean, this would get you by just if you kind of wanted to shoot at some cans and a few things, but it's not overly clear. And trust me, you're going to want to move on from that. So that's another negative. Um, probably my third negative is there's supposed to be um, a little suppressor set up in here, but it's still a little bit on the loud side. It's probably on the edge of backyard friendly. But here's some good news. Our buddy Terry at Buckrell, he makes an entire suppressor system for this. So it's very, very reasonable. You know, all his stuff is very um, affordable. It really is. He also makes a barrel band for the front of this that has Picatinny rails on it. And get, with that, guess what? You can attach my bipods to it. So if you want to set this up with bipods, um, you can do that, which is great. So there, I'll leave you guys a link for Terry at Buck Rail, in case you guys want a suppressor for that, but he sells the whole thing for it. Okay, that's my, pretty much my limited negatives, and it's not much, especially at a gun at this price point. So let's get right into the positives. The positives, incredible accuracy. You guys saw, I got a third, a one third inch group at 40 yards. I mean, unbelievable. It really is. I mean, this thing does really shoot. It is a, what we would call a tack driver. As far as the feet per second, they advertise 780 feet per second. We easily got that. We averaged 850 feet per second, and uh, we got about 32 foot-pounds of energy. And by the way, there is a secret to this I'm going to show you. You can adjust the hammer spring. So the 5 millimeter Allen wrench that this comes with, it's really simple. You just make sure the rifle is obviously unloaded. So we'll make sure that we remove the magazine out of this. And then we're going to decock it. Okay. There we go. Put that back on safe. Anyway, uh, if you'll notice the back of it, there is a hammer spring adjustment right here. You can put the uh, Allen wrench right here in the back. It just goes right in there. And you can adjust this. For the testing, I left it completely flush. I did not go inward with it whatsoever. Um, I left it pretty much on the stock position. But that's easy to adjust, and you can adjust this to your liking. Whether you want higher velocity, less shots, less velocity, more shots, it's entirely adjustable however your type of shooting. You might, you know, you might go hunting with this, and you might want to crank this up and get the most power out of it, and you're going to get less shots. Then on the other hand, you might like to plink in the backyard. You back that off, you're going to get more shots and just a little less velocity. 
Anyway, but it has that um, adjustable feature, which is great. And it comes with the Allen wrench to do it, which is fantastic. So I did chart this. I charted this with the just the hammer spring in the standard position, which would be flush with the back here. And uh, in that uh, chart, go ahead and take a look here. We ran three full magazines, so we got 27 shots out of it. But I also identified your sweet spot, and this is with it with the hammer spring adjusted just to even and um, flush with the back um, tube. Our sweet spot was from shot number one to 22. We averaged 845 feet per second and roughly around that 32 foot pounds of energy. So this is doing its job, it really is. So you, you have to love the fact that you have that adjustment with it. So whatever your style of shooting, this gun's gonna fit. Um, I like the stock. The stock is really nice. This hardwood stock, it's heavy duty. Uh, I like where the gauge is. The gauge is it's very identifiable. You don't have to look towards the barrel because some of them have the gauge that are on the front area. I love the fact that we have our foster fitting. It's just easy to fill. You don't have to worry about probes. Probes are a pain in the ass, as you guys know that. Ooh, pardon my language. The other thing I really like is the price point on this. Guys, you can get this gun, I've been looking at it. It's anywhere between 250 bucks, 280, probably right in that range. So it's extremely affordable. So you can't go wrong with this one, you really can't. Especially if you wanna enter the PCP world and you, maybe you've never had a bull pump and you want a bull pump. So this is, this is the way to go. Um, I do like the rails here, so you can put different accessories uh, on here if you like. And, I, and again, I'm going to tell you, Terry makes that barrel band on the front, which is great, because then you, if you want to set it up on a bipod. And this thing definitely deserves accessories like that, because it's a heck of an accurate rifle. Really fun to shoot. So how would I rate this? Well, with the negatives, with the trigger, and, and I'm telling you, you're going to get by with the trigger. It's just, I'm picky. So overall, and I'm not going to really ding it for the cheap scope, but I'm telling you, toss this. I'd give it uh, four and a half stars. Definitely warrants four and a half stars and definitely warrants a spot in your collection because it is, it's a comfortable rifle. It's really easy to shoulder. It feels good. Just remember, um, you're going to have to use uh, high scope rings on it if I didn't mention that. And it actually, it comes with high scope rings, but you're going to need it uh, just to get your cheek set up um, properly on that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Again, I'll leave you guys a link down below for Terry's accessories if you want to accessorize this. Oh, and the tank bags. I'll make sure I leave a link for you on those. Those are pretty cool. They're just really convenient um, when you're moving that tank around. So I'll leave you links for both of those. So again, don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your families are getting lots of shooting in. You're all doing well. Take care and God bless.